Welcome today, everybody, um, to the Got Your Six panel. I'm Steve Dunning. I'm the uh, national co-lead of the NBC Universal Veterans Network. Um, and we're lucky enough to have really fantastic organizations on board with Got Your Six. Got Your Six started out actually in the back of our commissary. Um, us and the Veterans Network sitting around uh, after having worked with the First Lady and the Joining Forces effort. I don't know if you saw those spots, uh, one with Tom Hanks, one with Spielberg, and one with Oprah. So we had shot those. And uh, you know, we had a lot of feedback just from veterans in general that there's a lot of great organizations out there. Here's another one, Joining Forces. But we don't know which ones are good. We don't know which ones are just talking. We don't know which ones are just celebrities who want to get some, you know, FaceTime. Um, so we thought, well, maybe we can have a larger umbrella organization that can vet out all of those organizations first. So people have like a one-stop shop of some place to go to. Um, and so we started focusing in on, you know, what would the specific needs be that we could serve. Um, and uh, we started out as the Hollywood Military Forum, which is not as sexy as Got Your Six, so we rebranded <laughs> it a little bit later. But we started to pull in just friends, you know, from Warner, from Paramount, from other studios. Um, and then we ended up bringing in uh, all the uh, heads of the studios, the networks, um, the talent agencies, and the guilds, IOTC, DGA, and, and all of that. Um, and so formed this committee and say, okay, entertainment industry, you know, this is our campaign. We own the campaign. Uh, we're the messaging of it. That's what we're good at. We're not going to be doing the actual on the street work that needs to be done because that's not our, that's not our, what we're masters at. But other folks, like some of the organizations here, they are masters at that. So we brought in the best in class to serve each one of those six pillars jobs, housing, education, leadership, family, so on. Um, so we we're lucky to have folks like Blue Star Families come in to lead up uh, the, the family pillar for us, Volunteers of America to come in. We have governmental partners like the VA on board, um, as well as then the rest of the, the media partners. We have a, a lot of nonprofits that are on board underneath those other pillars, but we have certain organizations lead up those pillars. So leadership, let's say, it's the Pat Tillman Foundation and Team Rubicon. Um, and then they work with their organizations under that our housing, which is 100,000 homes and community cares. Then they have organizations under that, and they go to organizations like uh, Joe Leal's Vet Hunters. Um, you should definitely check out vethunters.org. They're a great organization. Um, and they enlist their help in order to fill the commitments that have been made. So we brought in uh, the Clinton Global Initiative to be our monitor of this campaign. Um, as you know, they monitor the World Bank and, and lots of other huge campaigns. Um, and folks, therefore, have to make their commitments, or we will politely, you know, <laughs> um, ask them, you know, to, uh, you know, move out of the campaign. Um, so any funds that we raise from it are split up evenly to all the nonprofits. So whether it's this little six pin and anything else, you can get on gotyoursix.org. Um, that money goes directly to those organizations, so that they can directly affect the lives of veterans and their family members. Um, so I'm very proud and honored to have the folks we have here today. Feel free to come Sorry, on in, you. grab a seat. Let's All see. Right. Is there one more chair left? There's one there more chair go. left. I'm going to have to close the door now. <laughs> um, so anyway, we're very lucky to have folks here today to discuss uh, what their organization does, number one. Um, then we'll also talk about what their involvement is uh, with Got Your Six, what they're doing specifically with uh, our campaign. And then as well, uh, something I'm sort of going to throw to them, um, and that is, uh, you know, for folks specifically here at, uh, at the film school and other veterans that are in the film festival, um, they're looking to get more into the entertainment industry. That's certainly something, you know, those kind of questions can come to me. But, uh, you know, they have folks in their organizations that are trying to do the same thing. They, uh, you know, they're working with us in the entertainment industry, so they have some insight on, on how their organizations um, might be able to help folks in, in that direction as well. So if we can, I'd love to just have people introduce themselves and, you know, where they're from and so on. We can start down here at the end. Start down here? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Uh, afternoon, everyone. My name is Devin Holmes. Uh, I run a nonprofit called Warrior Gateway. Uh, we're about three, three and a half years old, and uh, we were started in 2009 to fundamentally answer the question of where do I go for help. Uh, we're not a direct service provider. Uh, what we focus on is how do we connect a veteran, a spouse, a caregiver, a counselor, a caseworker with local nonprofits, federal, state, uh, local government programs in that zip code, in that neighborhood. 
how does someone come back to a community and reintegrate back to that community and find the support? Um, overwhelmingly, what we hear from a lot of our recent veterans is, I just don't know where to turn for help. Um, and that's fundamentally the question we're trying to answer. The last three years, we built up a network of about 220,000 nonprofits across the country, and we're going to grow that in 2013. It includes everybody who's uh, on the Got Your Six campaign, and obviously a lot of other folks. Uh, so that's what we do. Great. Thanks for coming all the way. Yeah, my name is John Sharon. I work for Volunteers of America. Volunteers of America is a uh, is a very uh, is a very large organization that's been around for a long time. Actually, we were founded in 1896 as a a branch of uh, the Salvation Army, I'm kind of defective. Um, we have 16,000 employees across the country um, in about uh, 450 communities, serve about two and a half, maybe up to three million people per year, provide services from early Head Start, Head Start, Upward Bound uh, for kids in terms of education, um, lots of adult services from you know, soup kitchens to emergency housing, to intensive residential rehab. Uh, for the elderly, we do a lot of um, uh, nursing homes. Um, we also have a huge affordable housing um, system. And basically, uh, about two years ago, the organization who, who has been committed to vulnerable populations from its inception um, decided that it wanted to focus on the military community, active duty, reserve guard, um, veterans and families thereof. Um, I uh, had been working in the VA for over a decade. I was a psychiatrist, well I still am a psychiatrist, <laughs> <laughs> um, and a neurobiologist and um, also a chief of mental health both in the Los Angeles and in Miami and had done some work with the Los Angeles branch here putting together two kind of progressive residential rehabs programs that were non-abstinence based, harm reduction type models, very early on. And um, they came to Miami and asked me to uh, help with the expansion and innovation of uh, services to the military community through the network. And I started on January 1st and um, it's an absolute honor to, to have that role and um, it's great to be here. Cool. Good afternoon. I'm Jack Sherrick. I'm the Executive Director with Operation Homefront here in the state of California. Uh, we are a national organization. We have about 26 different field offices spread throughout the United States. Our primary focus is working with family members of those service members who have been deployed in Afghanistan and Iraq. We've been around since about 2002, formed up shortly after 9-11. With regards to the veterans population, our biggest focus is looking at the wounded warriors that are coming out of these two conflicts and helping them with transitional processes so that they don't end up in homeless situations. Um, two huge initiatives that we have with that are, one is our Operation Homefront Village. Uh, we have three of them. Uh, one is in the Maryland area, one is by the Burn Center in San Antonio, and then we have one in Oceanside, California, just down the street here. Uh, here in Oceanside, so that's in my neck of the woods, that's the one I'm most familiar with, spend the most time around. We've got 10 units right now. Um, we're guaranteed to get another six units. We have about 38 people on the waiting list right now. A lot of these people are being EAS'd out. So for instance, you know, they have a, uh, an injury like a, a limb loss or something to that effect that requires them to no longer be in the service. Well, that's gonna have a huge financial impact on them, you know, to where they go from having, you know, one form of salary to maybe 20, 30% of that salary in some cases. Uh, so we bring them into the village, we work with them, we work with their spouses, uh, we provide counseling services and other things, and we fund their housing costs, which when you think about it, is probably the largest overall cost for you know, any of us. Uh, and in some cases, we've also managed to take that a step further. Um, we've worked with some of our community partners who have actually deeded over homes to us. Uh, we've actually done about 30 homes so far. We've done three uh, within the last couple of weeks, Victorville, uh, Oxnard, I know on the 29th we're doing one in La Mesa where we will transition these individuals from our village or other locations where we have homes and we will move them into a home where we will uh, charge them, not a rent so to speak, but we'll help them build income to turn that home over to them at the end of two years and we provide them a completely mortgage-free home at that point. So. 
Um, that's kind of what we're doing in terms of the veteran population. Um, we do, you know, have some impact in Congress. You know, we were talking about earlier initiative sequestration um, is a big concern for us as we move forward into the future. How that's going to impact the internal, you know, support networks and how they're going to be able to help with these individuals moving into the future. Uh, so those are just kind of some of the things that we're looking at right now. So thanks for having me. I'm Susan Angel. I'm from the Department of Veterans Affairs. I'm the Executive Director for the uh, Homeless Veterans Initiative out of the Office of Public and Intergovernmental Affairs. Uh, my office does uh, policy planning and intergovernmental affairs, and I would say that's the majority of, of my job. Um, I, I go across the country and work with uh, community providers, uh, state representatives, congressional members, and really try to take the resources that are available from any uh, source, whether it's uh, the private sector or the, the Hollywood group or um, nonprofits, and glue it together on behalf of our veterans and try to get our veterans into those programs. Um, our secretary, we're, we're really so fortunate to have Secretary Shinseki and his vision because he really has taken a lot of our resources and put them out into the community so that uh, folks don't have to just come to the VA for support and care, um, but, the, but we support a lot of community providers. Let me give you an example of one of our latest programs, which is Supportive Services for Veterans and Their Families. Uh, we started it up last year um, with $60 million that went to uh, uh, 54 different um, providers. And we <coughs> had hoped that we could serve about 22,000 individuals. Uh, we've served over 32,000 individuals in the first year of its inception. And what's so um, exciting about that program and having uh, nonprofit uh, providers as our partners, this is the first program we have where we can actually serve the family of the veteran as well, not just the veteran, which was quite a barrier. If you're homeless and you're a veteran, we could not help your spouse or your child, but SSVF, we can. And in that first year, we served over 8,000 children. So I think our secretary has such great vision in how uh, to get our, our resources out into the community on, on behalf of our veterans. And um, I, I, I think that um, Got Your Six, I think, is a good partner for us. Uh, we ha we're doing a lot of public service announcements. I don't know if you've seen the latest one that came out about a month ago. Um, and we're, we're using real veteran stories. We're using real veterans in all of the filming. And the, the contractor that we use have a majority of veteran employers. And that's part of what we're doing um, to, to get the word out about the services that VA has to offer and how much we want to work with our partners. And I'll say, Joe, I think that Secretary LaHood is a real partner um, for our veterans. He certainly opened up his department for employment for veterans. And with the $30 million that he put out across the country, specifically for transportation, um, I, I think when you and I can connect with them, I think we'll have an excellent partner uh, in terms of transportation that will really You'll, you'll see that vision of yours, I think, come to fruition across the country. It's now all our vision now. Yeah. So it's, thank you, ma'am. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me. My name is John Adams, and I am the Director of Strategic Operations at Operation Gratitude. And Operation Gratitude is a volunteer-based and very grassroots military support group that sends over 100,000 care packages annually. And to date, Operation Gratitude has sent over 875,000 care packages to about five main outlets. And we team up with a lot of different nonprofits and other groups to make sure that our care packages reach these outlets. Uh, for example, we send care packages to homeless veterans. And Joe, I know we've teamed up with Vet Hunters and we've given you uh, some care packages. We also team up with groups like Operation Homefront uh, to send care packages, our battalion buddies, to the families of deployed personnel. And then we send care packages to first responders, caretakers, wounded warriors, and troops serving overseas, <coughs> excuse me, particularly in Afghanistan and what was Iraq. Uh, so uh, qu quite the organization, and uh, Operation Gratitude has two missions. Uh, first, to support the troops, and then secondly, and this is important, and especially when we talk about Gotcha 6, is to give an avenue for other Americans to support the military, because sometimes uh, for civilians, the military can 
seem very esoteric. And so Operation Gratitude offers a platform and an infrastructure for other individuals and businesses to support the military. And I'll just add in there for John of Operation Gratitude. It was started by Carolyn Leshock, who is a wonderful person who's <coughs> on our committees for Got Your Six. And, and these guys work tirelessly, and we have NBC <coughs> University days there um, and do a lot of work with Got Your Six there. And at the moment, since it's uh, March towards the millionth package that Caroline's going to deliver to a, a special service man or woman, um, it was all inspired by her uh, volunteering at the Bob Hope USO. And there was a very despondent soldier uh, that was coming through there. Other folks had, you know, brothers, sisters, <laughs> loved ones coming there to greet them, and this person did not. And this person said, oh, nobody cares about me. And that, that affected her so greatly, she went home and started to send a dozen packages at, at, at a time out there. And it has grown into this huge thing over the past several years that now will hit a million. Um, and as a matter of fact, right now, one of my efforts um, is to find that particular veteran because normally at the Bob Hope USO where I volunteer also uh, you log in there if you're coming through um, this person didn't because they were just like forget it I don't care you know I don't have anybody to go to so she has certain facts about him you're you probably hopefully we'll start to see in some social media this bit of a story about it and hopefully uh, folks can spread that so we can try and find this particular um, soldier because we, it, it was a male, um, because we want that person to be involved with that millionth package delivery. So you may see an email from me coming out uh, in the not so distant future, and if you can spread that to all of your, uh, you know, social uh, network organizations, that that would be great. So I just wanted to add that in for John. No, I appreciate that, yeah. and that story kind of goes to the point. It bridges the civilian population with the military population. And Carolyn does have a very compelling story because on <coughs> September 12th, 2001, uh, like many other service members, she felt compelled to serve. And <laughs> at the age of 46, she went to a Marine Corps recruiter and tried to sign up for duty. Yes. And then the Marine <laughs> recruiter told her that she was too old uh, to sign up. And that was a mistake. I, I did spend some time in the Marine Corps, and I certainly could have used Carolyn in one of my platoons. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> undeterred, she started volunteering at the USO and this just blossomed beyond anything that she ever dreamed of. And so, uh, yes, that's where we are today. And as Joe, or Steve was saying, uh, we do have our milestone care packages. So for our 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, we always have a special item. And on December 15th, we're going to give our 800,000th care package recipient a uh, chopper, a uh, motorcycle. And uh, the soldier received in Afghanistan, he achieved the keys. And it was a very harrowing week for that particular soldier. He lost a comrade and his father in the very same week. And then the very next day, uh, his command gave him his care package. So uh, there's a little silver lining to that rough week. Thanks, Jeff. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Robin Woody, and this is Major Mariah Taylor, and we work for the Chief of Staff of the Army in his Soldiers for Life office. And what that is, is we believe that if you start strong, you serve strong, and when you transition from the military into the civilian sector, that you reintegrate strong. So what we do is we work with the governments, the nonprofits, and the communities to ensure that there's health care, there's education, and there's employment for our soldiers. Um, so thank you, Steve, for having us here and getting to know and connect with all of the nonprofits today. I'm very honored to work with General Odierno and his entire staff. He's a fantastic guy. Uh, that couldn't be a better supporter of his soldiers. And, you know, he's the 38th Chief of Staff of the Army. He's in line of MacArthur, Eisenhower, and so on. Uh, so he's a very impressive individual and very down to earth guy that uh, I'm very happy to have him, you know, on our side and, and the terrific staff that he has. I was back there a few weeks ago in meetings about, you know, all of this, and, uh, you know, couldn't be happier about that. So thanks for coming all the way out for it to both of you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm Major Mariah Taylor, and uh, I handle specifically education programs under the Soldier for Life office. And a little bit about how we came into being, we're very new, we're just um, about two or three months old now. And the reason we started is because we wanted to get out into the communities. We act as the chief scouts to understand, particularly in places like this, where there is such a groundswell of support and there's so much passion for supporting your transition service members um, so that we, the military, understands what is out there and what is functioning. And then also as we travel, find these communities where maybe they're more in the beginning stages of coming up with ideas for what they want to do for veterans and service members and to share some best practices with them of what is out there and what's um, working already to help them 
uh, connect um, these different programs. And then our second piece is um, we're trying to change the Army mindset, um, and by extension the, the military mindset as a whole, is uh, we can tend to isolate ourselves. You know, the Army can sometimes um, you know, not be as connected to the, to the community and to the country it, it serves um, just by the nature of the deployments, and you tend to stick with your own. Um, how do you help these service members that are about to become veterans understand the transition process, the opportunities that are out there, you know, if they want to come to L.A., um, where they want to go, how they, can they position themselves uh, to become career ready, how can they educate themselves, um, you know, to become, you know, new citizens back in the community. So thank you for having us today. The great civic assets that, you know, we believe at Got Your Six, uh, you know, e every veteran is. Um, Got Your Six is, it's not a charity organization. Um, it's an organization that, uh, you know, puts the same level of responsibility that somebody in service had um, and gives the opportunity for them to continue to serve their mission. As you can see, we partner with the Mission Continues. Um, and that particular organization actually um, gets returning service uh, members to make a commitment to go out and serve the community. And that's very important for us because we want to bridge that civilian military gap and have the country uh, you know, change that national conversation about what it is to be a returning veteran. Um, and it's not the handout case. It is just to have the same opportunity that others have, number one, uh, to certainly be appreciative of the service that they have given to our country. Um, and then number three, to also have them showcase those same leadership skills, the same mission, the, you know, the, the need of service. We want uh, the rest of the civilian population to see that so that civilians and our, you know, business and corporate sectors can see firsthand the incredible assets that veterans are and we can get them into the workforce, um, you know, as they re reintegrate back home. Sorry, guys. <laughs> right. My name is Kent Corso. I'm a clinical psychologist and I'm also a veteran. I'm the clinical director for Give an Hour. Give an Hour is a nonprofit organization that provides free mental health care for veterans and their family members. Give an Hour was founded in 2005 by a Washington, D.C. psychologist named Barbara Van Dalen. Kind of an interesting story. She was sitting at a red light in the metro area with her. Uh, then she was eight years old, her eight-year-old daughter, and there was a homeless vet at the intersection asking for money or food or looking for some sort of assistance. And the eight-year-old girl said, how can we let that happen? This person served our country, and there are people just driving right through this light, not even acknowledging. And so Dr. Van Dalen said, well, I'm a clinical psychologist. If I saw one vet and gave that vet an hour a week for a year, that would be very doable. There are 400,000 mental health providers in the United States. If every single one of them gave one hour a week and saw one client for a year, we would make a significant impact on the mental health needs of the vets and their families. And so that's the goal of Give an Hour, is to enlist 10%, that would be 40,000 mental health providers, to be volunteer providers for Given Hour, providing free mental health service for the vets and their families. Currently we have 6,500 volunteer providers. They're in all 50 states. And just in the last year they gave over 74,000 hours of free therapy, which equates to a little over $7.4 million of free health care. We're very pleased to be a part of the Got Your Six initiative, and we're very pleased to be here today. And, and I would just add in, uh, you know, if you go to gotyoursix.org, you will see uh, all the organizations that are involved, number one, and you will see the specific commitments that uh, we have made as a campaign, and that our organ partner organizations are, are the ones helping us fulfill those. And yours, for example, the commitment that you guys are under, you can say what that is. Sure. So our commitment for Got Your Six is to provide mental health care. Specifically, we're looking at the next generation of mental health providers. Undergraduates and graduates across the country in all different programs in the mental health field. If we train them about veterans issues, train them about reintegration, train them about what it takes to contribute 
to best help this group of people who have served our country, then we're aiding that population even more. So our goal is to, by the year 2014, to train 100,000 graduate students and undergraduate students in the mental health field. Yeah. So we're on board with that. And Volunteers of America, your <coughs> commitment? Well, we, we're a strategic partner. So yeah. as a strategic partner, we uh, support efforts across all of the six basic um, pillars or buckets, as they're sometimes called. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, uh, you know, the Got Your Six campaign is many, many different things. Um, obviously, raising awareness and uh, beginning a new discussion, which will ultimately have a huge impact on the military civilian divide. I think it's one huge thing. Um, bringing together, um, you know, the, the, the concepts that are most important for helping out the veteran population. Um, in terms of identifying the pillars, and I think there's general agreement about how those pillars are important and how they're synergistic. And then bringing together organizations. You know, Devin Holmes here uh, is basically telling me there's 400,000 nonprofit organizations in this country focusing on helping the veteran population. That's a huge number. And the problem is that there's a lot of competition, there's a lot of redundancy, there's a lot of gaps. So one of the critical features here in the space is, is, is complementary relationships, supplementary relationships between the organizations. And that's really what we're in the process of doing uh, right now. And as a strategic partner, we're really well suited to do that. You know, we're, we're Volunteers of America and we're at Gateway are working together. We're working with Given Hour. We're working with many of the other organizations to try and help supplement what's done and really um, what's, what's needed. There's a lot of resource out there, but if that resource is not deployed effectively, it can't have significant the type of impact that we really need. Absolutely. And I'll just, uh, you know, I'll just go ahead and rattle off what those commitments are so that um, anybody out there who's interested in helping these organizations and helping Got Your Six reach those goals, just go to gotyour6.org and you can see how you can support, show your six and so on. And for those who know veterans who may need some of this help or some of these services, um, or know that they still feel the need to serve and want to have a mission, they can go there to, to do the same thing. Um, so in our jobs pillar, um, we do a lot of job fairs with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. They're one of our partners, NBC Nightly News. Uh, has partnered with them to uh, do these job fairs across the country. We did just over 100 last year and ran over 100,000 veterans and family members through those. Um, out of those, uh, several months ago, though, we've already got our 10,000th higher, confirmed higher out of those job fairs. Uh, we'll be doing 400 of those this year. Um, and the goal for our jobs pillars and all the partners there uh, that are coming together is to hire 500,000 veterans and military spouses by the end of 2014. So a lot of jobs, a lot of people, and all the help that we have, I, I, I hope we're going to make that goal. I won't say I hope, I know we will make that goal. <laughs> Us as a company alone, NBC Universal, you know, we committed to hiring a thousand veterans over the next three years. Comcast is our parent company. We challenged other studios and networks to do the same thing. Disney has done that. Um, you know, all the networks that, and the studios and so on are on board with that, highly supportive of everything that we're doing. We will certainly easily surpass that. that uh, thousand goal within our own company, I would say within the next year. Um, in our education pillar, um, we have Student Veterans of, Veterans of America and the Pat Tillman Foundation, um, and their pledge and commitment to us is uh, basically to work with the administrators of 500 colleges and universities across the country to increase veteran resources. So this is particularly targeting colleges and universities that don't have a military affairs uh, officer department. So we want that to happen at 500 more universities. Um, in our health care buckets, um, given hour, uh, as we we're speaking about, is uh, training those 100,000 graduate students. Demystifying PTSD is a, is a very big uh, you know, goal of ours as well. Folks like J.J. Abrams, uh, you know, very well-known producer, director, Star Trek guy, all of that. Um, Bad Robot, his company is one of our partners. He's particularly passionate about uh, demystifying PTSD, so he'll, he'll do a whole piece on that, a video for that, that, that we will use and push out there um, you know, nationally across the country. Um, in our housing pillar, um, we have uh, 
our 100,000 Homes campaign, which is led by Becky Canis. I wish she was here today. She's uh, fantastically committed. She got a tattoo that at the moment says 10,000, right? <laughs> and she's waiting until she can add that other zero on it because uh, their goal with Got Your Six is to, um, uh, actually, I'm sorry, she has 1,000 on there now because the goal is to, um, to house 10,000 chronically homeless veterans by July of 2014. Um, you gonna say something? <laughs> yeah, I met her the other day, and she was a firecracker. She's great. She has ten thousand, but the comma is in the wrong spot. Oh, well, that's right. That's so what she's it is. saying. Either you help me, or I have a stupid tattoo for us. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave her some hope. Thanks. <laughs> she's great. Um, in the family pillar, um, Blue Star Families and the military military child education coalition. <coughs> um, uh, with them with, and their partners, uh, will provide uh, reintegration tools and training to. 300,000 military families and 100,000 primary and secondary school educators by the end of December 2014. And in our leadership pillar, um, continuing the mission of service, uh, we have the mission continues and Team Rubicon and all of their partners. So we will engage veterans and military family members um, to volunteer 1 million hours of service in communities nationwide by July of 2013. So as you can see, Got Your Six, um, you know, it, it's a, a two-pronged effort, one to give, one to help those veterans continue to give. On that note, I'll just run uh, our PSA, and I can say about, you know, the celebrities that we have on board, um, none of them are just FaceTime people. They're passionate about it. Um, they work in the community. They are at our Got Your Six uh, backpack backing days that we did at Universal uh, just on Friday. Um, there are people who uh, you know, are very closely connected to the military, that they have a family member in the military, they have served themselves, like Rob Ribble, you may have seen our Funny or Die spot, um, which is, is, is a hilarious spot, uh, he's a Marine himself, um, and that's all about you know, having people's back, as I think everybody in here knows, got your six in military terms, means I've got your back. So we want uh, the veterans to know that the civilian population, we have their back, but we also want those veterans to have the civilian populations back. You know, we're a team in all of this together, so that, that's what our hopes are. So I'll run this PSA and then uh, we will uh, open it up to, to some questions so we can uh, have more interaction here. Do you know what it means to have someone's back? To have another life depend on you and only you? Where your vision, your defense, your support is the very thing that is the difference in their life or death. This feeling is known in the truest form by those that willingly protect you and me every day. In the military, got your six means I've got your back. They've got our six. It's time we got theirs. Do jobs, education, housing, and more. We can support returning military veterans and their families. To find out more information, go to gotyoursix.org. They've got our six. Now it's time that we have theirs. I've got your six. 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 So, uh, as, as I said, you can certainly go to the website to see uh, a lot of our other media and PSAs uh, about Got Your Six. So, I'd love to open it up now. We have about uh, 25 minutes left to the audience, whether that's questions for some of the organizations, um, whether that's things about reintegrating uh, back into the workforce and particularly the film business. Um, I can address a lot of that. Um, so anybody have any thoughts, questions? Darren from the GI <coughs> Film Festival, which we have to thank for doing a great job this weekend as well as the awards dinner tonight. So thank you, Darren. Thanks. Um, I'm also uh, helping the state of Kansas with their veterans initiative. So I'm kind of doing this with a number of hats. I want to address the uh, 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 specifically to providers of the, the mental health providers, which is, a, it's a, which is a great thing you're doing. The VA has a tremendous backlog in terms of, uh, it, it, you know, there's just not a lot of people in the past that have been trained to deal with PTSD and these issues. When I was at the VA, we worked with the chaplains to train, to provide some education with chaplains. With the shortage that the VA is experiencing in terms of having mental health providers, are, how are, are you working with the VA to help, help them? That's a great question. The, the whole purpose of given hours to help plug gaps. So for example, we've got formal partnerships with the VA, we've got partnerships with DOD, 
We've got partnerships with all the major mental health organizations at the state level and at the federal level, partnerships with VOA, many of the organizations you see sitting up here. And so our brochures, our cards are in VA clinics, in DOD, uh, medical center clinics, and by pairing up those in need with those willing to give an hour, that's how we're able to assist. Go ahead. I'd like to commend all you guys for your work and your participation here today. This is very overwhelming. The Dr. Six Initiative is just, just out of this world. Um, I just love everything you guys have to say and all your positions that actually make our community um, just better. <laughs> and particularly, um, Volunteers of America, I'm from the South Jersey area in Philadelphia. Yeah. The presence is just, uh, just bar none where I'm from, but when I moved last year, I don't really see the Volunteers of America really that prevalent in, in the area, in the LA area. I'm not sure what. I mean, that's interesting. The, yeah. the, the Volunteers of America Los Angeles is a, is a much larger organization than, than the ones in uh, Jersey. South Jersey yeah. and, and um, in the Philly area. But yeah. um, so we have a big presence here. We have over 60 programs, cool. um, and we have uh, somewhere between 12 and 15, depending on the month, right. that are focused um, specifically on veteran populations. Mm -hmm. And we serve veterans through all 60 programs. It's just a matter of whether, whether they're specifically focused on veterans or not. So if you or anyone you know uh, is looking for the types of services that we provide, you know, look online, BOALA, and, and, and we'll, take, we'll take care of you. And John, actually, if, uh, you know, if you had said to me back in D.C. that the title of Volunteers of America is a bit of a misnomer because of... Yeah, yeah, it is. Thanks for bringing that because up. Because I, 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 I think the same thing. Like, oh, there must be millions of volunteers. Well, from no, so, right. So, as I was saying, we, we, we kind of, we, we, uh, we were founded in 1896, and in 1896 it was an entirely volunteer organization. Um, we have a lot of volunteers now. We have uh, so we have somewhere around 100,000 volunteers who support and amplify the work of the 16,000 um, member family of BOA across the country. Indeed. Joe Leal from yeah. BedHunters.org. Okay, I've had more work the grassroots number. And, uh, <laughs> And every one of you guys is bringing such a great, uh, you know, just solutions to the table that, that we're the ones that kind of disperse it, take it to the streets. I can tell you how every one of you guys play a role. For example, VOA, we work tremendously with VOA. Matter of fact, some of our Iraq, Afghanistan vets are now currently working with the VOA because we have a great partnership to get them connected as the SSBF and also the HBRP uh, program. Uh, we also partnered with VOA so that we could get a veterans program in the city of Almani, and we're working with Carl Calhoun. So we do a lot. We were actually on Skid Row, and I was watching VOA driving by. So we we wave at each other because we're all <laughs> <laughs> you know, one two, one fight type of thing. And uh, so so that's great. And then we're looking at Operation Homefront. Um, I was doing a lot of research recently, and um, for me, I was in served active duty. I don't care if you're Marine Corps, or wherever you are. I, I remember my you know I've been infantry all my life. I remember. Uh, my platoon started saying, you're going to donate a dollar every so often <laughs> to the Army Emergency Relief. You're not going to ask questions. You're going to just do it. Mm -hmm. And it, was, if it, it wasn't until um, the clutch went out of my vehicle to where I, I needed the Ar AER, Army Emergency Relief. And it was great. But then now that I sit at the reserve side, I'll tell you how you guys come in. I sit at the reserve side. Uh, the reservists were, were not authorized to, to tap into AAR. And every year there's millions of dollars of sitting in AAR. So one day I raised a question, I says, okay, why can't the reserves who have a greater need tap into AAR? It would be nice. And so when it ran all the way to senior leadership, they said, well, don't you have your own version? Don't you have Operation Home? Program? And I says, well, we do. And you guys are outstanding because your ocean side, we're working closely with them. The only problem is, is that at this time, and maybe this is something that our, our, our reservists have to be 30 days and over. It's actually less than that now. Uh, right. we, we took a look at it, and that was an initial concern before, you know, from the time of activation to the, you know, backside when they actually returned from Afghanistan, sure. you know, most recent times. 
Uh, we decided to expand that, and, and don't quote me on this, but I believe it's 120 days up front and 90 days after that we actually will support those individuals right. during that time frame. But when you look at programs like Homes on the Home Front, there's no restriction on that. Right. I mean, that's any service member, any era, you know, that can apply for that program because we have homes throughout the United States. So we'll work with them in those particular regards too. Um, so those opportunities are there and we are looking at expanding some of those initiatives too. And I think it's interesting that you bring up the whole point of the, you know, the, the Army Fund because, you know, I'm a former sailor. I was in for 21 years and we have something similar to that, which is Navy and Marine Corps Relief. And I think one of the advantages is, you know, when you talk about those individuals who you know, are financially struggling. A lot of those organizations will, even when they do help, they're usually loan-based. So they still have to pay that money back. Uh, that's one of the nice things about organizations like Operation Homefront is that it's all grant-based. Everything that we do goes straight to the service member and, you know, that's, you know, it. In fact, we've actually helped some service members multiple times, including both Guard and Reserve. That's why I'm glad you exist. If it wasn't for you guys, because we're not allowed to tap into the AR at this time. Right. So we're, we're asking if they could re revisit that, and it'd be the <coughs> biggest change that AER or the Navy does, because we look at it like this, if one does it, we're hoping everybody else does. Right. But, and they asked us, well, how will we replenish the fund if the reservists have a greater need than the active duty? Mm -hmm. Well, the same way I did before, we have to contribute. Mm -hmm. And they would get even greater money into the AER fund, because there's quite a bit of reservists. So I want to thank you, the reason I'm bringing that, because you've got been a huge for the reserve of the National Guard. For Operation Gratitude, we had a stand up. You guys literally gave, we asked for a thousand care packages. You guys gave us 2,100. I was like, wow. <laughs> our motor bay, our motor pool area was full. We had to stand down and just the fact that we were able to open that up, right? Because the words homeless and veterans never go together. So they opened it up. <coughs> it was really nice to see the cars. You guys put that extra love. And thanks to Steve Dunning and, and Got Your Six, we we've, we've sat in your in your assembly line. I feel like I'm a GM every time I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> and they bring entertainment and comments right at the time. And uh, but it was it was really nice because I put them together with you guys. It was really nice to see the veterans and just the fact that that you guys geared from Afghanistan to Iraq and now you're going to the homeless veteran issue. Uh, that was great. <coughs> just yesterday we were on Skid Row. I brought that up earlier, <coughs> and we we had a stroller right because we're grassroots. We're privately funded. We're not government funded because we could tailor to the individual need and we're privately funded. We had a baby stroller, don't lie. We used a baby stroller walking down Skid Row with Operation Gratitude. It was the funniest <laughs> thing, but we didn't even make it half a block. And there was veterans running across with their, with their VA card saying, hey, I'm a vet. Mm -hmm. And um, this is why it's important to know about you guys because we're taking those initiatives and we're running them down to those guys and we're saying, do you know about Google? We're like the eHarmony homeless vet. <laughs> you know about that? You know about that? You know. So you are, you know how important your, your care packages are? I'll tell you how important they are. When we go out there, that helps us open the lines of communication. Sure. When we're giving them something, it's sad. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that the vet hunters has to exist. I, I swear to you, I wish we didn't. But when we gave these vets a care package and they saw the deodorant, they saw that, I told myself, you should have saw them, they were happy, the morale went up to the roof. But it saddened me because of our brothers and sisters out there receiving it. But thank you. And, and then to everybody here, by the end of the day, we're gonna become BFFs, man. Right? Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't need to be rude, but I'm texting because I'm telling our senior leadership, can't wait you guys get here, seriously. And earlier today, they, they, they introduced you, and I think it was, uh, they, they forgot really, really, really good looking. I forgot that though. Yeah. But, uh, but, <laughs> hey, cause I didn't know. but thank you, Steve Dunning, for doing this. I appreciate being here. But thank you, everyone here. Absolutely. Thank you guys. Hi, my name is Judy Welch, and I am um, a six-year Army veteran. I moved here from Chicago six, uh, no, excuse me, two years ago with uh, my 17-year-old son, who's also an actor. Um, I just want to say thank you because uh, I auditioned for a PSA and I am in that PSA, the new one that just came out, and I do look forward to doing more. Success thank story. You. Great. Success yes. story. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yes. I, have, I have three things. Um, it's not going to be long. Going back to the bringing care packages over, I think I'm probably, I, I just got out the Marine Corps August. When I was in Afghanistan, we did the initial push to Helmand Problem, so we didn't have anything. 
And when I say, when I seen a fresh pair of socks, I seen uh, a candy bar, like I just got so excited because I've never like, we haven't seen anything like that or had it in so long. All we do is eat MREs on top of MREs and we sell MREs to each other. But then the other thing, when I was hearing you guys talk about your different programs, um, to the P PTSD, had it pretty bad when I got back. But it's like when you get back on a, as a, as a corporal, you know, you just want to see your family, you want, you want to hang out, and then like they give you so much information all at one time, and the last thing on your mind is like, I'm going to deal with this when I get back. But I didn't, you know, I noticed that I actually had it until like months later down the road until um, I want to say, I think a lot of people had it to where uh, planes flying over or people whistling, uh, sounds like mortars coming over your head, and it's like, They'll they'll just say they'll give you cards to say oh, if you hire guys are having trouble with PTSD don't don't keep it in and talk about it here's this, here's this person here's this number call this person but it's nothing like I know a person that can like fit your story um, I know personally me I've talked to a person it's like I can't really explain how it is watching somebody get shot watching it happen you know you know doing things that the average person doesn't see so. I would rather talk to somebody that kind of like lived that situation, kind of been there and know exactly how I felt, like how it first feels to, you know, pull the trigger and you actually see bodies going down. Um, it's, to me, it's got a lot better. Like I, I, I understand that I have it, but it doesn't affect me. But kind of like going, going towards and I, going towards your EAS, when you go through TAPS, they give you so much information in three days. I don't think it's enough time for you to get in, like all that information and be able to like reach out, do resumes to kind of like set yourself up to have like, a smooth transition. I kind of knew that I wanted to do this maybe about a year and a half before I got out. But it's just like a lot of the programs that the military has to offer while you're active duty, you don't know about it. You don't know about, actually you don't know about a lot of stuff until after you get out. And especially with school, I didn't know until like somebody told me on deployment that you can go to school while you in without using a GI Bill and kind of using them grants for that. But, and I hear like you guys talk about it. So I'm like, is it more for after you get out or trying to get the word out while you still in and you really getting on that transition? Because now uh, when, as an enlisted, when you say, you know, I wanna, I wanna do this, I'm trying to do this before I get out. It's like work comes first and then whatever you have to do like on your spare time, you can do that after the fact. And we all know you can be at work at 0, 06 in the morning and not leave until about 9, 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. All that comes second, but at the end of the day, it's like I'm kind of like doing myself a disfavor because now I'm trying to do all this at once. I had to fight. I, actually, I got charged. I had came up here and I had turned in my paper, uh, like some of my stuff when I was uh, <laughs> registering to come here. I got charged because I can't. I wasn't allowed to come up here, cause of uh, work duties. But I'm like, you know, I got deadlines. I, I get. I'm giving you this now. All I'm doing is just asking to come from Pendleton, come up here, do this, and I'm coming right back. And it's like, they say, oh yeah, we're gonna let you do this. But at the end of the day, they're really not. It's like mission comes first. I get it. If we was over in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. back here in Garrison, mm -hmm. it's really, we're training. We can, you can let this person go and, and do this. And I, I just believe. I just think that. It needs to be pushed more to people that's getting close to their ear yet. You need to jump on this year out because it comes so fast. That is why they started our office. Yes. Because of ex your experience mm -hmm. exactly, especially the younger soldiers. How do we make that bridge before, before someone is discharged? Because once they are, it's the realm of the VA and the veteran support organizations. So how do we position these individuals prior to them getting out so that they can do the necessary um, you know, things to take care of themselves to prepare for their education and their career before they are actually discharged. Mm -hmm. so and we just made, we just changed it now. It's a commander's program, and it is starting 12 months out. So the commander will assist the soldiers. He's transitioning. Check. Have you started your resume? Um, how far can I you know assist you? Can I help you um, make contacts with anyone that's out there? But it is now a commander's program, and it's 12 months out versus the one-week transition before they leave. So we are trying to make things better and improve the system. 
Okay. Sorry for one second before we take the other questions. Uh, Tristan uh, here from the Pat Tillman Foundation. He was unfortunately stuck in traffic, but he was another panelist here today. You know, welcome to LA. You know how it is. Um, and anyway, Pat Tillman Foundation is in our leadership pillar, and uh, he's one of the fellows there, so he can tell you what Pat Tillman Foundation does and how they're cooperating with Got Your Six. Actually, I'm a Pat Tillman military scholar, um, so I don't work for the foundation. I'm actually one of the veterans whose lives they're helping out by providing scholarship and leadership uh, training and networking through the foundation. Um, I apologize for being late. There was a game today at school, and I was coming over here from doing some work, so they have campus all locked down. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the Tillman Foundation, they provide us with a financial scholarship, which is immensely helpful. But, but more than that, they provide networking and uh, an opportunity to come together um, as veterans and scholars and we do training and we work on our um, leadership skills and uh, just general professional development. Uh, we're pretty diverse uh, sort of studies among the scholars um, and actually quite a few of the, they work in hand with a lot of the different organizations in Got Your Six. Usually we, uh, one of the main parts of being a Tillman Scholar is service, and we work a lot with Mission Continues. Um, and additional to that, uh, the fellow who started Team Rubicon was a Tillman Military right. Scholar as well. Yeah, so. Jake and Ron. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you for being here. And in the back, go ahead. Uh, my name is Jody Hart. Um, I'm a former Marine, 92 to 96. I've been in the film business ever since I got out of the Marine Corps. And um, here we are in the film festival. We are in L.A. My question is to all of you is, how are you going to uh, use us, uh, filmmakers, both veterans and patriots, to help get your mission uh, accomplished and or your word out? It's interesting you should bring that up. And Steve talked about earlier, we're conducting our March to a Million campaign. And it's a catchy campaign that is going to culminate next December on our millionth care package. And it's going to be a big deal. And we're looking for celebrities and other people in the entertainment industry to help us promote that. Um, because, like I said earlier, we're very grassroots, and we're looking to get the word out. And we're going to officially launch it at inauguration day, the president's inauguration, and because uh, I guess the president, the White House, is involved some way. Um, so in January 20, we'll tell to promote that uh, throughout the year. So yeah, that'd be wonderful um, for that type of help. Get <coughs> ahead again there. Yeah, just a just a couple comments. Uh, one on the uh, I've done a lot of work over the years with uh, veterans. I've been involved in a lot of veterans organizations. And of course, I have my own personal experience of having gotten out in what my focus was. Um, one of the problems with transition assistance, in, in my opinion, is that no matter how much time you give, uh, like the gentleman over there was saying, uh, when, when you're on active duty, um, there's just certain things that you're focused on. And when, after you, after you get off, it may be six months or a year before you realize there's other things that, that you needed. And so part of what you need in the transition assistance is the ability to, after you get out, and once you realize there are things you need, to be able to go back, to be able to have things online. And there's so much you can do online these days. It's that you don't have to do everything in person. Be able to get the information, what you need, when you need. Um, you know, you, you've got your Soldier for Life program, which is, which is great. Uh, I know Chris uh, Magino and Colonel Sutherland, I worked with them previously. Um, but that's, that's what you need because, you know, when I got out active duty, I'm married, I got two kids, all I cared about was the job. Well, guess what? Then a year later, I want to care about my VA loan. Okay, but now what do I do? And then there's, the, you know, maybe <coughs> running back to school. And so people, everyone, when we get out, we have one specific need and there is so much information. And so the ability to, uh, as being a Soldier for Life program, to have that transition for life kind of thing as part of that, where you can go back and you can have maybe online groups so people can help each other out what they've done and they've supported. Um, those are the things that I, that I need that we, we need to move it into the 21st century the way people are and how they interact and, and not have it as a, okay, three days, I got three days to do it, period, but to have that, that whole other thing. So maybe I could comment on that a little mm -hmm. bit. There's been a really um, hardworking uh, group that's actually uh, they, they're sort of getting rid of TAPS and putting in its place called Transition GPS, and it is very much online. And part of um, each person's requirement will be to sign up for what they call e-benefits. 
So you, you put your information in and you are then enrolled um, in the VA automatically. <coughs> so you don't have to go make a separate trip. And what that will also do, you can um, ask through the programming, you can find out what specifically are you um, entitled to in terms of your benefits at that point in time. So it gives you access <coughs> to the Veterans Benefits Administration, it gives you access to VA health care, but because it's online, it's yours forevermore. So I think we, we heard it, and I think DOD heard it loud and clear, mm -hmm. that that last three days, um, you know, we saw millions of dollars go into the cylinder trash can of all of our beautiful pamphlets, because who cares? So now it can follow you wherever you go. And I wanted to make one comment for you, too. Um, you were talking about it's sometimes hard to think about getting help from someone who hasn't been in the combat theater, um, that it's hard to talk about that. So I would really recommend um, thinking about the Vet Center program, because the Vet Center program is, um, I would say, 80% staffed by uh, in-theater veterans themselves. They make a great effort to hire veterans to help veterans, and that's a place where you can go and, and meet people who have had the very same experiences you have had, and they're in a helping role. So if, if you haven't tapped into the Vet Center yet, I would really, really recommend. They're small, little places throughout the communities. There's 300 of them across the nation, and the whole point is this is your place. This is a safe place, and you're going to meet brothers and sisters there that you feel comfortable with. If I can just add on that, you know, um, it, it's an interesting listening to some of the questions, and, and I agree, you know, TAP, there's been a lot of feedback of TAP, and, and part of it is that it's not that the information isn't necessarily relevant, it's just not timely, right, and you're counting days, <coughs> and not thinking about six months out. Um, and, and, you know, what I tell folks is, you know, we're a nonprofit, and I tell folks, if you haven't registered with the VA, just do it, you know, they have their own challenges, they're working towards it. We know there's some challenges, but just do it. And, and the numbers are sub 50%, and we need to get those over. Um, but the reality is also that there are folks, and maybe some of you in this room, that don't want to go to the VA. For whatever reason it is, you don't want to go there. And, and I accept that. You know, I accept the fact that you want choice. And, and one of the things that um, John and I were talking about yesterday, and we've been working with Geiger 6, and part of why Geiger 6 exists is, is to make it aware that there's a lot of help out there. There's, there are other programs that are available to you, whether it's for, for homeless or, or those at risk, whether it's for behavioral health, whether it's for um, working through the paperwork that you need. That's part of why we were started um, in conjunction with uh, the Chairman's Family and Warrior Support Office, and we worked with Chris Magluma, who's now on your team, mm -hmm. um, whose name I still can't spell, but I know <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can pronounce He's it right. This weekend, but he wanted to be here so right. bad. We'll just call him Chris M, because <laughs> that's spelled the rest of it. Um, there's a lot out there, uh, and, and part of what we provide in, in our role in the Got Your Six campaign, uh, in that, as I said, we're not a, a service provider, um, is to make sure that we're disseminating that information. We're making sure that not only do you know about the VA programs, that are available in your community, but you also know about the hundreds of thousands of nonprofits that are supporting this community, and especially the ones, including the ones that aren't traditional in the military space. When you think of a VOA, or you think of an Easter Seals, or you think of a United Way, you don't always immediately jump to saying, oh, they help vets. But you know what? Every single one of them have veteran programs. Um, and so we're trying to make that visible to folks. And so I encourage you know, one of our one of our sort of commitments and what we're trying to accomplish next year is that whether you ask me the question, you ask John the question, you go to the VA, you're talking to DOD, when you ask the question of give me my options, where do I get help for whatever my need is, my VA loan, my whatever, um, we're getting them the information. We're getting them the most accurate information. So you don't actually ever have to come to me, you can go to somebody else, and I'm gonna make sure that person has the answer. Because the worst thing that we can do, and we've been working at this for years now, is you ask four people, you get four answers. And that's the worst thing you can do. You need four people giving the same answer. Weather, all flights are canceled. What do you mean every flight's canceled? Like any? Canceled. That's so sweet. That's crazy. I'm a water dog. He's like, you're done, Tom. But yeah, the point being that, that there, are, you know, there are great government programs at the federal, state, and local level, but there are also great nonprofits. You know, there's a lot of help out there. And, and your point was well taken that you came here and VOA is huge in this area, but you didn't see them. Right. Well, 
That doesn't mean they're not doing stuff. It's that there was a communication gap, right? And that's some of the stuff that I think a lot of folks on this panel and, and not here today are working on is how do we break down that communication gap? How do we make sure you get that information so you know what they're doing, you know what the VA and the vet centers are doing, you know what you know the Army and DOD is doing as well? I, I, I want to make just a quick comment to follow dovetail on what Devin said about the VA. I, I'm a little bit biased. I, I put I get 10 years of my life into the into the VA, and, um, so you know, uh, and I have great feelings about the VA. And I think the VA at times takes a beating. <coughs> and what I can tell you, especially now that I'm, I'm on, uh, you know, in the in the community provider side, is that the VA is making huge strides to move towards partnership, to uh, to to recognize that, you know. Every need of the veteran is not going to be solved by one governmental agency. Mm -hmm. right? It's actually the duty of all our populace, and so we all need to participate, and we're doing that. You know, look at the look at look at what we're seeing here. Given Hour, right, which has mental health professionals, is partnering with the VA and the DoD. And the VA is saying we want help, and actually they need help. So th these are, this is a big change in policy, and I think that. The VA needs to be recognized for that because um, a lot of the press about the VA uh, is, I think, is hurtful and damaging. And I don't, I don't think it's appropriate in the vast majority of cases. Over there on the side, I had questions earlier. Sorry, we're trying to get to all of them. We'll, we'll be through in a few minutes. Um, I'll, I'm just, I'll play us out on uh, our Funny or Die PSA. But, a, but after that, we, I mean, we can continue this uh, as long as anybody wants to. So any panelist member after that who needs to go or anybody else who needs to go, welcome to. But uh, we'll continue talking and I'm happy to be here until the 8.30 thing tonight. So, sorry, go ahead. Uh, my name is Matthew Hanson, former Air Force veteran, also a graduate of this school. Um, my question is more on the entertainment side. Um, yeah. I had the good fortune this year of actually creating uh, a reality series on the cable networks. Uh, in the meantime, until like it picks up, gets picked up by who knows when, who knows you know, where. Uh, what are the kind of strides that you guys are taking to, because this is the first time I've heard of this organization, to actually get word out there for veterans who want to work in the industry, who have a resume, who've worked on TV shows and films and kind of like that. What's, you know, where do we go to look for them? Are you involved with uh, Veterans of Film and Television? Yes. Are you in that group? Okay. So they're a great resource. Mike and Ka have started that group, and that's obviously a, a networking group. I would think everybody here at the school is probably aware of that organization, fellow veterans uh, from all, you know, from all conflicts, um, uh, helping others network within the industry. Um, the, some of those people are, have been doing it a long time in industry. Some are just new and trying to get into it. Um, so we partner with organizations like them. Um, they're the one that I focus on a lot at NBC Universal. Um, and we, uh, you know, simply starting it off, we try to bridge the access, because as you know, it's very difficult to break into this business, highly competitive. I didn't know anybody when I came here, you know, begged to work for free, work for free everywhere. <laughs> so it's very tough for anybody to get into the business. So with the NBC Universal Veterans Network, we put on events where we can bring in outside organizations so that they can interact directly with our executives, with other producers that work there, um, and across all the different crafts in the film and television industry. So that's our first way to try and connect people. And as a matter of fact, tonight, if you're at the award ceremony, I've invited you know, lots of my colleagues and friends to come. So about 40 to 50 people from all the different studios, Warner, Paramount, the Guild, and so on, that will be there. Um, so that interaction is what we want to have happen. So these questions and, hey, can I get you my reel and, and all of that, we, we want that to happen. And my uh, you know, speech tonight is about, are you ready for Hollywood, actually? Because <laughs> um, <laughs> so, that's a big question you got to ask yourself you know, yeah. be, and be bluntly honest uh, you know, as you try to get into it. Um, but you, I won't go off on that. You'll hear that tonight. But, um, the, the one sort of obstacle that I see with folks coming into the industry is that from the corporate side, from the studio saying we want to hire a thousand veterans, um, those are veterans in every single department. Those are accountants, those are marketing folks, those are you know logistics folks. They're unfortunately not grips, electricians, directors, producers, if you know how the, you know, the industry works us at the studio, we're not hiring those people. You know, those are folks that are coming in as a third-party production company for us, right? So somebody pitches us an idea, we buy it, 
that executive producer or showrunner on that particular series, he has his line producer that he likes working with. That line producer has the crew that they like working with, so they go out and bring in those people. Um, so it's more about connecting with the guilds um, and talent agencies, depending on if you're in front of the camera or behind the camera. Um, so that's really where our, our partners in the guilds and agencies come in. So for example, with the Directors Guild, um, we are developing a pilot program. I don't know if you're aware of the DGA trainee program. So if you want to become a, a second AD or you know UPM and, and move up that ladder. Um, in the same way they have that for the general public at the moment, we want to create another one specifically for veterans. Um, and it's one of the reasons I love working with the LA Film School and Amber and Andy because uh, these are folks that are, are already trained in exactly what we need to you know, put into our workforce. Um, because you know we are the entertainment business. It's a business. Uh, we, like other businesses, cannot train people. Can we can't hire them and say, okay, you know, this job needs to be done, so we'll bring you in, but we'll train you first, and that means that that, that movie's got to get out or whatever. So people have to be able to do that uh, position for us to be able to hire them. Um, so that's why you know this school is so important. That's why getting internships, uh, you know, into the companies is so important. That's why getting involved with uh, programs like the DGA uh, trainee program are, are so critically important. So, Steve, can I add something to that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Addressing Absolutely. exactly to the yeah. point. Yeah, Film Festival um, here. The GI Film Festival, which we've expanded to, to uh, the Hollywood, and we have a, a big six, seven day thing every year in DC. If you've got a finished product, okay, if you've got a reality show, and the GI Film Festival originally just took things that were military veterans themes and it didn't have to have a high level to, to be themed and main character and stuff like that. But we're adding a new category, which is to showcase uh, products that are done by veterans, but it doesn't have to be about veterans. Okay, so that's a, that's a new, new category. So what I would encourage anyone who's a veteran who's making a product is if you got something obviously that is uh, has some sort of main character or something that has a, a military veteran tie-in, is to submit it to the GI Film Festival so it can get showcased there. And if you've got a product that's something new, like a reality show or something like that, that, that you're trying to you know, get the word out and get some eyes on with our new category, that would, might be something as well. So I would encourage people to go on the GI Film Festival website and, and check that out um, because we will be having a bigger presence here in Hollywood next year and in May, in November, and in May we have the, uh, the GI Film Festival big operation in, in D.C. I think that's a big move too because I've talked to a lot of veterans who are, have been working on stuff and it's not so much you know veteran associated but either you know either the director or the main actor somebody is a veteran yeah. and they're oh in. and one other point thing we have a partnership with the, the pentagon channel and we take the best of the those <coughs> submissions through the gi film festival and we have a two-hour <coughs> program that we that you can go on to the uh the pentagon channel through that way and the pentagon channel because it is a government <laughs> channel doesn't pay for anything but what better way to get your your product you know shown into 2.1 million military and, and potentially 30 million households. So uh, that's another, we're trying to make more distribution to get people like you shown for good product. And one more before we play the video and then you know, we'll continue, but anybody who needs to go. Hi, uh, Claude Bragg, former Navy. Uh, my question is for like those of us going to school now and working to get into the entertainment industry, um, we get our GI Bill. And that pays us why we go to school to supplement that income. But is there something that you guys have in place to like give those veterans working for that, like some sort of sort of like paid internship during those breaks of school? Because it's really stressful coming like knowing that you're into semesters coming and you may have two weeks to three months off, and it's really hard to find jobs to be like, hey, I'm going to work here for three months, but I need this much income to survive still out here in this city, you know? Right. Because there's something. Anybody want to answer that? <laughs> I would say apply, I'm apply to become a Tillman <laughs> military <laughs> scholar would be one thing you could go ahead and do because yeah. it, you know, that helps a lot. And um, I'm also a film student as well. I'm studying animation, and uh, it's pretty rugged. I I know where you're coming from. Um, th there is stuff out there, but networking is the biggest thing. Like usually, during my summer break, I production assist and do that mm -hmm. sort of thing, and it gets me by. Um, and I would just add to that that you know all the studios and networks are different about how they handle their internship programs. Um, you know they all have like a campus coordinator. 
as far as folks that are applying for internships. Um, most of those internships, though, are credit-based, um, and you know, we uh, you know we need folks that can stay there for a certain amount of time. So you know, we can't have somebody there for two months and then somebody else for a month and a half. You know, we need to have a commitment um, in order to get the work done because you know the internships are, are very valuable to us uh, to help it in the work. Um, but I would just say, uh, you know, it, you know, it sounds like a black hole of go to everybody's website, find their internship coordinator, and send your resume. <laughs> that, that sounds like a black hole. Um, but I would just go a step further and call, you know, you didn't hear this from me, but call the main numbers of each of the studios and ask for the HR department and the campus uh, coordinator or, or head of internships. And, you know, it's all about relationships, as you know, so having that personal conversation with somebody is going to stick, you know, in, in their mind as you get your resume over to them. Um, so it's also taking that initiative. So that's, you know, do your research. You know, it's easy to get, you know, everybody's number online, the, the main numbers, and then start hitting them up for the campus coordinator. So I'm going to go ahead and play our Rob Riegel uh, Funny or Die spot. Um, Rob, like I say, is a uh, Marine of South. And actually, I think he's still, he's still reserve active duty. Um, and here we go with this. He's a great guy, supports all of our efforts, and uh, just enjoy. Definitely better than the second. I don't know if like as a whole as good as the first, but um, yeah, no, he sounded a lot like him. It was impressive. Yeah, he, he's in it. <laughs> Got your back, bro. Got your back. You <laughs> just got slapped. Got your back. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Great moment. I love you both. How about that? Huh? Got your back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You wash your hands? No. Nope. Got your back. <laughs> whoa, whoa. That sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I got your back, man. <laughs> yeah! Woo! Playing basketball? What are we doing, huh? We are moving it up? Nice. Oh, you guys already playing? Yeah, yeah. 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 No problems. Up. Hey, keep up the good work. Yeah. 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 All right. Woo! Got your back. Woo! I'm just saying, this girl is. <laughs> January Jones. Fantastic. Hot, hot red. Unbelievable. That blonde hair. I, I think that's like natural. Without a doubt. She's natural. natural. No, natural blonde. No dye. Natural blonde. I so hear what you're saying. <laughs> 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 All right. This is great. Good talk. Good talk. All right, guys. All Those right. Greens, huh? <laughs> Relax. I got you six, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Glee was sick. Sensational. I got your back. Ooh, hey. Hey. That's Mike Dowling, hey, thanks, one of the man. founders of Better Than Film and Television. <laughs> Marine K9. Over the next five years, an estimated one million military service members will be returning to civilian life. So how do we ensure that these veterans return home as leaders and civic assets? It all starts with us, lending some support and making sure we have their back. Or as they say in the military, having their six. Whether it be jobs, housing, education, or one of the many other problems facing our veterans and their families, they're looking to us for help. Together, we can get their six. Find out how you can help at yoursix.org. So anyway, I don't know, this obviously the video doesn't look like that. the green on it, but uh, that's just one of the spots. And you know, one of the things that we also do, um, you know, with the veteran population is to engage them more in the entertainment business. And so with Veterans of Film and Television, uh, for example, and anybody here at the film school, we're always looking for folks who want to add things to their reel. So we'd love to get creative concepts for uh, you know a spot for us. We'd love to have somebody execute that if it fits in with you know our branding and, and our uh, marketing initiatives. There's a spot for your reel, and you you know you may be getting it played you know nationally across the country. So um, we're always open to getting in those ideas and then uh, letting you go out and do it. So it's a great, it would be a great credit and a great piece for you guys to have. 
So, I won't break it up, but I just want to firstly say thank you again to all of our panelists being here today. Some have come from D.C. and far away, so thank you so much for being here to everybody. Um, and uh, we will see some of you tonight at the uh, 8.30 Awards Dinner at the Montauban, and some of you there as well, too. Um, thanks to everybody for their service um, and, and being a support member, family member, um, you know, or, or just a, a concerned supporter and ally of veterans in this country. Um, it's a huge passion of mine. I do everything I can to, to possibly support that mission. And uh, just glad to have you all, all here today. And, and thanks for supporting the conversation. And uh, check out gotyour6.org. And uh, if we can help you, and hopefully you can help us, it's a great partnership. So thank you, everybody. A round of applause for our panelists.